Hello everyone, hope you're having the most wonderful day today. Welcome to the Film Insight channel. For today's video, we're going to discuss more bars featured on Bar Rescue and reveal how they're doing now. So, sit back, relax, and without further ado, let's get right into the content guys. The Broadway Club In a season 7 episode, John Taffer pays a visit to the failing Broadway club in Tuala, Utah to rescue it from closure. Silently owned by a real estate agent named Randy Hunt, he gave a part of the business to Patty Bullock who does the day-to-day -day management. Sadly, Patty is only interested in partying at the bar and as a result, his staff have no respect for their boss's authority. With the business being $200,000 in debt and being weeks away from closing down for good, Hunt calls out to Taffer for his aid. Upon his eventual arrival, Taffer sits in the car and notices that the street is a ghost town with the surrounding buildings being abandoned. Sending in some recon, who are local radio stars, to get a customer's perspective, they order a cocktail oddly called liquid marijuana and a margarita. Predictably, their drinks are beyond awful since they were very sweet, poorly mixed, and terribly presented. Ordering some food which was prepared without gloves, it takes 30 minutes to get to their table and it disappointingly tastes like garbage. Throughout the whole service, Patty was carelessly drinking and screwing around, not commanding the staff like an owner should. Fed up with what he was seeing, Taffer heads into the bar, dogs on Patty for her incompetence, and questions Hunt for hiring someone as inexperienced as her. Forcing the staff to clean the bar, the bar rescue host threatens to leave if Patty doesn't get her act together, which we don't blame him for. Holding a staff meeting the following day, Taffer finds out that the business is really behind on rent and that the customers leave due to Patty's unprofessional attitude. Bringing in some experts to correct the staff's lack of skill, they're taught how to make balanced drinks that aren't too sweet and popular meals that will drive customers in. Holding a stress test later on, the customers seemed to love the food and Patty was actually stepping up a bit for once, but they were ultimately overwhelmed with the traffic and had to shut things down. Overall, Taffer was impressed with what he just witnessed and expressed that with some renovations and more training, they'd do just fine. Spending hours redesigning the place with his team, Taffer first renamed the place to the Roost Bar. On the exterior, they added a beautiful sign that really highlighted the new name, and the interior was modernized with wood decor and detailing. Additionally, they got tons of new equipment including a Berg system, two POS systems, and sky tabs. Relaunching soon after the showing, customers poured in and were impressed with the changes made. Post Bar Rescue, the business and its sales skyrocketed and most importantly, Patty stopped partying on the job and was finally taking her position seriously. Interestingly enough, the bar made claims of the show pressured them into drinking on the job to make things more entertaining, which doesn't really surprise us. Shortly after the taping of this episode, the restaurant was temporarily forced to shut down due to state restrictions, but they opened right back up. Currently speaking, the bar is still open to this day and gets pretty positive reviews online for their food and drinks. The Grant Bar and Lounge John Taffer heads over to the Grant Bar and Lounge in Tracy, California to attempt to bring it back on its feet. DJ Miller, who purchased the bar back in 2014, thought it would be easy to run and this was somewhat true for the first two years. Although things started to fall apart since Miller was too stubborn to listen to his staff and renovate the place. Losing close to $5,000 a month, the business is $190,000 in debt which is only increasing so the owner called out to Taffer for his aid. Upon his eventual arrival with chef Jason Santos and mixologist Amy Kofsky, they notice that the bar is in a good location but nothing makes it stand out. Watching through the hidden cameras, Taffer notices that they're overpouring at the bar and that there aren't many female customers. Sending in Kofsky alone for some recon, Taffer hopes to find out why women don't visit the bar and it's clear from the very beginning. When the mixologist orders some basic cocktails geared towards females, the bartender expresses that they don't have the ingredients to prepare them. Ordering a gimlet, the staff is clueless about how the drink is made and they're forced to look it up on Google. Aside from the drink which obviously tasted awful, Kofsky orders some food which the chef prepares without washing his hands or wearing any gloves which is repulsive. The moment her food was sent out, Taffer and Santos rush into the bar to stop the service and prevent anyone from getting sick. Angrily confronting the owner for letting this happen, Taffer demands that the kitchen and bar be clean before they make any renovations. Having a one-on-one -on -one with the owner the following day, the bar rescue host finds out that the bar has a high staff turnover but it's because he blames everyone but himself and doesn't train his staff. Inviting Miller's silent business partner slash ex-wife Tammy to help deliver the numbers, they've lost close to $8,000 in the last few days from overpouring which is mind-boggling. Running a stress test, the staff was overwhelmed with the orders and was too slow to keep up, so it ended in disaster. Following this, it was clear that they needed more training, so the experts helped them improve on their basic skills. Kofsky taught the bartenders how to make fun and more feminine drinks to attract women in, and Santos showed them how to make simple, non-messy nightclub meals. Working throughout the entire night, Taffer starts with renaming the place to Leia's after the owner's daughter, who he hoped to pass the business on to. The interior was made to feel more intimate and a dance floor with drink rails was added so it could be converted into a sitting area for overflow dining. Receiving tons of new equipment, the business got 4 POS systems, kitchen supplies, and digital table tents for PR. 
To stay on top of things and avoid waste, the bar was gifted with a subscription to TBT and Partender. Finally relaunching, the patrons were ecstatic with the new decor and were happy with the service quality. After the taping of the show, Leia's sales have certainly increased and their VIP booth and nightclub sells out every weekend. Nowadays, their customer base is much younger and more women are finally attending thanks to the new menu. Former employees of the bar came out after the episode aired to express that DJ is terrible to work for, but that was already pretty clear from the episode. Reviews on Yelp and TripAdvisor are fairly mixed and the place has an okay to an half star rating. Most praise the food and atmosphere while others complain about the staff being unfriendly and drinks being unavailable due to a lack of ingredients. Regardless, it's still open and running to this day. VFW Post 6216 for another Season 7 episode, John Tapper heads over to VFW 6216 in Albuquerque, New York to bring it back to life. Built in 1996, it's dedicated to the veterans of foreign wars, which is what the VFW stands for, and is owned by Rudy Vallis. The bar's quartermaster Johnny suffers from PTSD, but the job and his community keeps him grounded. Nowadays, rather than serve auxiliary members, which are veterans and their families, they're forced to open up to non-members to get by. Needing some guidance, the owner calls out to Tapper and his team for some much-needed help. First, the bar rescue host meets with Mark Decker, who works as the department manager for the state of New Mexico's international VFW organization. He explains that the membership of the VFW have dropped significantly from 5 million to 1.6, with some smaller posts closing down. Decker was hoping that reviving this post would be the perfect template for the other ones to follow so they can revive the VFW as a whole. Analyzing what the issues might be, Taffer first points out that both the exterior and interior look bland, but he recognizes that they could generate tons of money with the banquet hall. Taffer also notices that the customers drink out of red solo cups and that the notice board is overflowed with posters, making the place look untidy. What's more, the bar rescue host sees that the kitchen area is set up like a residential kitchen and isn't getting much use. Having had previous experience with veterans and the army, Taffer isn't really impressed with the state of the post. After hearing that Johnny put his blood, sweat, and tears into working at the bar and that this is all they could afford, Taffer got a bit emotional. Meeting with some of the VFW members the following day, they admit that the bar is falling apart and that there aren't enough members. It becomes clear that the biggest issue plaguing the bar is their lack of drive to market for new members. Before holding a stress test, expert mixologist Rob Floyd teached the staff how to make simple drinks. While the bar was certainly overwhelmed during the stress test, it gave Taffer a good idea about what to work on. Speaking with Johnny the owner later on, the bar rescue host tells them that they aren't traditional cooks or bartenders and that they need to hire someone for the sake of efficiency. Working for a while on the renovations, Taffer made the exterior more vibrant and gave the bar a humongous sign with the meaning of VFW spelled out. Inside, everything was modernized and photos of veterans in their uniforms were placed on the walls. Receiving tons of new equipment and furniture, the bar finally had a functioning kitchen and the banquet hall was renovated to seem more elegant. A bit more than a month after Taffer and his team left, the bar's sales increased and their memberships are on the rise. Thanks to the banquet hall, they've been able to generate tons of money and are booked for multiple events. It's mostly used for fundraising activities or catering events, but they're starting to take external bookings. What a great ending to this story. Well, that'll be all for today's video here on the channel. I do hope you enjoyed, and if you did, be sure to drop a massive like down below and comment your thoughts. Subscribe for more content like this and turn on those sweet bell notifications for instant access to our content. Have a good one, guys.